Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. I've got a really different video for you today. I'm actually out in my yard, not at the desk today. And I'm gonna show you what I've been working on the last couple years. This is a little water feature that I put in last year. And I've had a lot of people on social media ask me about it. So we're gonna talk about it right after this. Now, if you followed me on social media, you know a couple things about me. One, I'm a native plant freak. And I've also been converting areas of my yard over the past five years into a habitat that is more suitable for wildlife and birds. Now, part of the motivation was to photograph more birds on my property, but I also have found it just really rewarding in general. As I've been adding native plants in here, I've noticed a huge increase in biodiversity, and I've also noticed an increase in birds on my property. But one of the things that was key for me is adding water features. So about five years ago, I put a very simple drip feature up here, just some water splashing into a pot. It actually attracted the birds. Four years ago, I added a water feature, which was just a little fountain, and birds would come in and perch and nest on that. But two years ago, I decided to up my game. I wanted to make a mini bird pool. And that's what I've created back here. I'm gonna walk you through my build today. I'm gonna to put links to everything, and I'm gonna put a lot of pictures up here and some video to help you guide you through this as we get through here. But let's just kind of talk about how I decided where to put this, because that's a big factor. Now, I wanted something that was close enough for me to photograph. So I put it about 15 to 20 feet away from a basement window, which is right here that's off camera. You can't see it, but it gives me an ideal place. I can actually sit in my basement, drink coffee, and photograph birds in the morning as they come in to bathe. The other thing that's important is where do I want to place this in terms of getting birds to come in? And it is very critical that this be close enough to the edge of the woods. If you put this in an isolated area, what you're gonna find is house birds will come in, those birds that are comfortable around people, but you're not gonna get a lot of birds that come in from the woods, especially migrants. So by keeping this closer to the edge of a wooded area, you'll have much more success. Now, if you put it too close, you may find it a little messy because these trees are gonna drop a lot of things into that pool, so it might be a little bit harder to maintain. If you put it too far away, the birds aren't gonna come in. So what you're gonna find is the closer to the woods you can get it, the more birds you're gonna have come in. If you're not in a situation like that, don't fret. You can add a lot of shrubs. In fact, I've planted some shrubs right along here to help with this. So I've got some elderberry and spice bush that's growing wild. And I've also added some perennials in here just to give more cover to ground birds. By the way, that little patch right there is a patch of bee balm. If you're interested in hummingbirds, because this is my photography area at my house, um, that really is great for attracting hummingbirds. Now, now that we've figured out a location, or you figured out a location, uh, let me walk you through how I decided on this build. So I'm gonna step back to the pool and walk you through it. Now at the bottom here, you're going to notice that I've got an elevated pool. This is simply a raised bed for gardening. These will run you about $100 to $200, depending on the size. I went with one that's about two feet, and then I dug this area out so I could get it nice and level. That was important, and why did I choose a raised bed? You don't need a raised bed. You could put this flush on the ground. But if I'm shooting over there in the window and I'm elevated three or four feet, having this elevated really, really helps me out. I can photograph birds almost eye level in the pool. If they hit one of my perches up here, I can photograph them at eye level, and I have the ability to add some more perches back here. So for me, a raised bed works really, really well for photography but also from a cleanup standpoint. Having this flush on the ground, if I'm mowing grass or things are falling, leaves are blowing, it's much more likely to end up in the pool. Elevating it keeps a lot of those obstacles out of the way. So I like this um, elevated bed. I used a metal frame, but there are many, many options. And you can even make your own raised bed. The next step is to fill it and line it. So I've got a thick liner in here and I'm gonna cut it down to size. And then I add dirt below that liner. It's very important when deciding the depth of this. I wanted about eight inches on this side down to about an inch and it slopes down. Smaller birds are gonna prefer that one to two inch area. Larger birds might enjoy this deeper area. And then every now and then I'll have some wildlife come in. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I filled it with dirt, I've added my liner. And last year, that's about all I did. I did want something to attract birds and running water will do that. So I put a solar pump in here. I found that it worked very sporadically. It was a, a very cheap solar pump. And this year I have upgraded a lot of features. So let's talk about the upgrades. I fill, oh, by the way, fill this with rocks. I put smaller rocks on the low end. I put bigger rocks on the tall end. All right, so that's kind of the setup here. This year I elevated the game. 
I wanted continuous running water that was electrically supplied. So I added an outlet here. I'm not gonna get into the build of an outlet. You can Google that for yourself. If you hire somebody, it's gonna cost you a thousand to three thousand dollars to run a 20 foot length from the outside of your house to um, an electrical source, which I have right here. Uh, I did this one myself, I was pretty proud of it. I managed most of it myself, so, um, and I, I followed code, I dug the line, I felt really, really good about that. So that little rock that's over there is a fake rock. I'll link that too, because I found this helpful. I've got two of these fake rocks, and I've got the electrical underneath there, and that's supplying continuous power on a timer to this fountain. Again, I'm gonna link that below as well. Put some rocks up here so it trickles down, and I get that effect all day, and the birds will actually land right on there and drink from the fountain or the noise will help attract migrating birds. And I do apologize because I'm outside. I've got a lot of ambient noise out here today. There's some birds that are pretty loud up here. Other things I've added to this. I want to watch what's happening all day long. And I've got two things we're going to talk about. Behind me on this side, I don't think you can see it, is a ring camera, and that's solar powered. Now I could certainly run it off the electrical since I've had it, but I bought this last year before the electrical, and, <laughs> oh, the birds are loud. And uh, it worked so well, I never had the need to power it continuously. So I'm using a solar powered ring camera on the back here and the electrical powered fountain. In terms of other upgrades, I wanted something that looked a little bit better than the metal on the outside. I had some stones laying around the house, so I added these. Oh my God, there is a raven and four. <laughs> four Blue Jays over my head. Okay, I think they've left. We'll continue the video. I'm not even gonna edit that out because it was kind of fun. Um, I had some rocks left over from when they built my house 20 years ago. I took those rocks and cemented and mortared them to the outside of this. Something decorative I think is helpful, especially if you're doing photography. The birds could care less about it. I think it looks a little bit cleaner. And if I have company over or somebody's looking at this and I'm showing it off, it does look really, really nice now. So on three sides, I've got this facade on the front. Uh, I mentioned the fountain that I added this year. That's electrically sourced. I'm gonna put a link down there for you. Not, not super expensive. And then the last thing you wanna do, especially around photography, is add perches in. Now I've got a piece of driftwood that I found here um, from somebody selling it on Amazon. And they really, really like to perch on that. And I'm gonna be putting some pictures up here as I go, but they really, really like that driftwood to perch on it as they decide whether they're gonna jump in or not. I will tell you, it's been really, really exciting because not only have I pictured birds here, I've just noticed I enjoy watching my cameras. I'm gonna put up some things from the ring camera that happened over the winter. I thought I would drain this pool out in the winter. And then I started to notice I was getting visitors, especially late at night. I'd have raccoons come in, sometimes fox would come in. And then I started to get a screech owl. About once a week, he would come in and bathe. I found this just absolutely thrilling to watch it. I'd get up every morning and scroll back in my ring camera just to see what happened the night before. So it's been really, really neat. I'm gonna leave this up year round. By the way, I don't heat this pool in the winter and I actually would, would read on this if you're thinking about adding a heating element in here. While you certainly can do that, it could have some drawbacks in terms of birds. They may come into warm water in the winter and feel comfortable, but remember, they're gonna leave this and go into very, very cold temperatures if you're in the north. So uh, be, be cautious if using heaters in these uh, winter baths for birds. Okay. I've got one more thing I haven't talked about yet. So I'm watching birds on my camera. I've got everything set up. The water's running. It's on an electrical timer. And I'm really, really enjoying this. And I added one more thing this year that I want to talk about. It's mounted on the top of that rock right there. And that's called the Haiku Box. I'm going to show you some close-ups over here because you're not going to get a good idea of what this is. This is an audio device trained to listen to birds all day long. It'll send you notifications when you have a new bird in your yard or you can set alerts if you've got specific uh, species that you're monitoring. I found this really, really cool. There are birds that were in my yard that I never really knew were here during migration. It's hearing them, but I'm in the house during the day and I'm not hearing them. I had a couple opportunities where this went off and I would grab my camera and come out and look around and see if I could find it. And while it didn't work 100% on success in terms of photography, I just thought it was really, really cool to see the birds up here floating around alerted by this haiku box. Now I'm gonna put a link to the haiku box down there. There is a subscription for this. There's an upfront cost. I always let people know if anything was given to me. So the unit was given to me, but the subscription is on me. I liked it so much I'm subscribing to it for five years. So I really, really enjoyed that. It's again, it's powered electrical. So I've got the, uh, the rock under there with some electricity, a source for electricity, and I've got the haiku box plugged in here. 
So what's next for me? Well, I'm gonna continue to evolve this. I'm in pretty good shape. I feel really good about where it's at. I'd like to actually add more running water into here. So I may look into some more type of circulation in here in the future. I've got a bed that I created here. So I put some rocks out here, some mulch, and in the future, there'll be plants in the front of this to add some scenery. And then I'm trying to expand and add some shrubs back here because I feel there's a gap between the woods and the pool and I'm trying to shorten that gap a little bit. I don't want tall trees. Again, they're gonna drop stuff into the pool. So I'm trying to get some four, five, six foot shrubs in this area. So I'm working on that in the future. Uh, but you'll see in my future videos, you'll see more plants behind this pool. And, and that's what I've got for you. All right, team, I decided to come back in the office because as I was recording that video, I realized there's a few things I left out that I couldn't show you out in the field. So I'm gonna show you here. Um, in the initial plan, I wanted to drain. So I wanted to be able to open a valve and drain all the water out. I still use that valve, not as much because I, I come up with something different. But if you were interested in that, you need to do that up front because what you're going to do is lay the liner in. I'll put a picture of this little uh, gasket that I used. I then run a hose under that with a valve on the end. I'll put links to this down at the bottom if you are interested in this. Having a drain system is, is really critical. So I wanted to do some tips and tricks at the end of this video and one of the the tips i would say is absolutely have a plan to drain and refill so that this water can stay pretty fresh it it gets a little funky in there especially in summer a lot of stuff's going to drop in there and start to decompose there are some algae tabs you can buy so um depending on their effect on wildlife i try to read and protect obviously i'm doing this for the birds so i don't want to i don't want to create anything that might be bad for them there are some algae tabs you can use but re replacing the water should be helpful um, so anyway, gasket, hose under the dirt. So you have to put it in before you put the dirt in. Um, and then you lay it in. And then I've got a little filter that I put on top of there. I can then take it outside, cut a little hole in the, in the metal, open the valve, water runs out. It runs out very slowly. In lieu of that, this is a maybe a better suggestion. I'll put a picture of this. This attaches to a drill. You put two small pieces of garden hose on either end. You stick it in there. You turn the drill by hand and it flushes it. It pumps it out pretty fast. So you can almost drain your entire pool the size of mine in like five to maybe 10 minutes. You drain the whole thing or get most of it out. Uh, or you can run the hose at the same time. So you're putting in fresh water and pumping out the old and it kind of gets it circulating. So that is something um, I didn't mention, but I would consider that as well. There's a few other little things in here around the pump itself. So I'm going to give you a close up on the fountain. The way I built the fountain is I drilled holes into some of those leftover rocks that I had and I just stacked them on top and ran a little piece of uh, plastic tubing upside. Just need to make sure the tubing fits the pump. So I've got the pump underneath all this, little piece of tubing shoots up there. And I would suggest, no matter how you do this, some sort of a pump filter. Now I use a big mesh bag with some balls around it. Again, I'll put pictures up here so you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. You can use, if you've got a bigger pump, you can use a, a box with some filters in there, but you will find that these pumps will get clogged after a little while and you'll constantly be out there refreshing it. I, I clean that out about every five to day, 10 days. Like I'll go out there and just take out a, the hose and pull the pump up a little bit and hose that out. Okay, so that's the pump. That is the, uh, the drain that I put on there, but that filtering is really, really big deal. So with that in mind, here's a summary of just some of the tips around installing one of these pools, some, some things that I have found helpful. Number one, elevation is a little bit better for photography. So however you decide to raise that up, you'll probably be better off. Getting it close to the woods will bring in more birds. There's no doubt about it. The areas that I have closest to the woods have the best success. And I've, again, I've got a couple of water fountains and features around different areas here. Um, and I think that's really, really important. Planting some shrubs or attractive plants around there can be very, very beneficial. It offers some nice backdrops, and the, but also getting some separation where you photograph. So you don't want to crowd the area. You want to have some separation. Uh, at the end of this, I'm going to show you some images and you can see that that really pleasing separation, like, like the bokeh, the backgrounds are, are much more pleasing when you have that separation. So you want some available perches, but you don't want them necessarily to crowd the area if you're using this for photography. A couple other tips and trips couple other tips and tricks is um, having a drain system or a water replacement system ready, being ready to deal with maintenance and, and kind of refilling that water on a fairly regular basis, maybe weekly or biweekly, just having a plan out there, knowing this is not necessarily a once and done. If you want a true wildlife pond, 
and you just want to build one and put it out in the woods, uh, the birds and frogs will love it. You'll probably get more amphibian action than you will bird action, but they'll come in and check it out. But for me, uh, a lot of this was was for photography. So I want to make sure I have a place that's clean and healthy and hygienic. And I'm not necessarily trying to attract frogs and amphibians as much as just birds. So I'm going to clean that out on a regular basis. So having a drain system or a filter system is another tip that I would say is really, really, really important. And then having some audio and video available. If you're going to enjoy this, enjoy it all the time. You get some cool things in there when you're not watching it. So I showed you my ring system, but you can use any camera system there. Uh, and I also showed you that Haiku box, which is really interesting to get the audio of what's around that area. Um, so those are just a few tips and tricks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it was really fun doing this project. I would encourage everybody that's a bird lover to try something around some sort of a water feature. I'm going to finish this by just showing you a few of the images uh, I've done over the years back here, uh, including some of my side gardens and, and some of the other drip fountains that I used to have in years past. And I'm going to show you a couple of videos as well. I think you'll enjoy this. Um, I am going to remind you to subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of other content. So this is a little bit different for me, but I have a lot of content out there. So subscribe to the channel, hit the ring uh, bell for notifications. And then finally, in the comments section, if you can just add anything around this, people will search this video for, for ideas just about bird pools. I call this a mini pool, but a, a mini pool for birds or a bird bath. Um, and you may have some really helpful suggestions, things that I've ignored or things you've tried and had success with. So feel, feel free to put that down there. Um, and I would say that's the video for you today. I hope you enjoy a few sights and sounds from outside. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.